everyone zeddy here again today with a brand new video and it's custom card review time we did this once before and i asked if people wanted me to review their own custom cards they could look up my twitter zeddy hs and put hashtag zeddy custom and send me a copy of their photos or their picture or their cards all that and i was expecting maybe a couple to go over and then we do like the custom uh, card subreddit but man did you guys send a lot of cards my way so this entire custom card review will be dedicated solely on twitter card submissions um the episodes probably normally won't go this way i'll probably do like a mix of your guys's cards along with like the custom hearthstone subreddit but with the amazing amount of support you guys have shown me with the 9,000 subs uh getting close to 10,000, and just the overwhelming support and like submissions on twitter i thought what the hell let's go over every single submission i got and you know some of them might not be the best some may be amazing we'll see but these are all coming from you guys from viewers like you and again if you want to submit cards to me um for me to review live on the channel just send it over to Z uh, twitter.com zdhs i'll have the link in the description below as well as on the screen and just put hashtag zeddy custom and then put in your card and i will likely review it on this channel so let's take a look at your guys's custom cards and uh, yeah, we'll be reviewing these on like a two two scale basis. I have it like on a design slash flavor scale where I just take a look at like, do I think it's a cool design, the flavor good, all that stuff. Not necessarily like, is it good for the game or whatever? And then we take a look at balances. Is the card balance, is it too OP? What would I do to maybe to fix or scale it down? Whatever. So let's take a look. And again, I'm still new to the custom card review thing. So any suggestions you guys have in the comments below about how to improve it, let me know. I'm more than happy to listen. So let's get going. Let's take a look at your guys' card. Let's start with Emperor Peter. He submitted a card called Plated Guardian. It's a druid a minion. It's a 5 mana 5-5 five, five beast. And whenever this attacks and kills a minion, gain 5 armor. So it's 5 mana 5-5. Five, five overall you know not amazing stats but the design of flavor feels druid to me uh the attacking killing um gaining armor i like it um it's obviously kind of a play on using guardian animals you would summon it it would gain rush uh recently nerf so don't know how impactful that would be but would you run this over like a teacher's pet sated thresh it on or twilight runner i don't know um the armor gain is relevant druid wants to stay alive it'd be interesting it'd be interesting to see how it plays out and it's a beast and all that, so it's pretty cool. Um, I, it feels very druid to me. It feels really solid. I would say that um, the flavor and the design of it, I'd give it like a, a strong like four out of five. I think it's pretty, pretty well designed. And in terms of balance, I don't think it's necessarily OP. I actually think it might be more on the weak side because the five mana five five do nothing feels bad. It has to attack and kill a minion just to gain the armor. Um, I'll probably say it's just relatively well balanced. Whether that would see play or not, I don't know. Might not, but I'll give it a I'll give it a four out of five there too. I think overall pretty well designed stuff. Next, Magicianer submitted three free shaman cards. Uh, we'll see if these are the cards that would put Morabi over the top. We have first uh, Ice Fury. It's a zero mana spell. It overloads for uh, for one. It freezes a minion and it gains spell damage plus one for each minion frozen until the end of your turn. So I guess you could freeze multiple things, get spell damage that could synergize with like spirit claws. It could synergize with that new two mana weapon that was recently made, uh, buffing that up. And yeah, zero mana spells can be pretty powerful. Is this card necessarily insanely OP or how is the design and flavor of it? Well, it feels very shaman to me. It it's got overload it's got freeze it's got spell damage things and these are all things shaman has been doing lately um feels very shaman i actually would give it like a five in that regard like very much uh that way and also the fact that it's not that great honestly it's a zero mana freeze a minion but the overload for one and the effect is not particularly great because you have to multiple freeze things to get that spell damage so feel shaman in that regard so that leads into our balance thing is it op not i don't think so at all I actually think this card would be relatively weak. Um, yeah, zero mana freeze is all right, but again, the overload, the spell damage, I don't know how relevant it would be in any archetype right now, but could potentially be powerful. I mean, zero mana, multiple effects, but I'll give it a, I'll give it a three where on the, the, on the, the balance part where it just feels like maybe it wouldn't do enough. Um, he also gave us ice trap. It's four mana freeze all enemy or all enemy minions. So you can use it in conjunction with that zero mana spell, I suppose. And give all enemies at the end of the turn, if this card is frozen, deal one damage to this minion. So this is absolutely insane. 
It's a four mana freeze everything. So it's like one mana more than Frost Nova, plus doing a damage, plus you have all your other synergy stuff going on in the freeze package. Uh, pretty insane. In terms of design and flavor, I don't know if this really fits Shaman in that regard in terms of like the mass board freeze or anything like that, but I could see it. I mean, we had uh, Avalanche. It kind of had a similar effect to an extent. Four mana, although this is much more powerful. But I I'd give it a three in the design flavor. It, it definitely reaps of some Shaman madness to me. Um, At the end of your turn, dealing one damage, though, really puts this card over the top in terms of power level. It seems kind of insane. It's like four mana, Arcane Explosion, slash Frost Nova. Really ridiculously strong. But honestly, if you're going to make free Shaman work, somehow... I think a card like Ice Trap kind of need to be in there. And again, it's not like game-breakingly insane, but it's very, very powerful. And if you put it in conjunction with that zero mana spell and get the spell damage going, then it's kind of insane. So I'll give it a I'll give it a three on the balance part. It's uh, it's a little bit a little bit too strong. But again, if you want to make that archetype work, you probably have to. And, la and lastly is this uh, 5 mana weapon, Ice Reaper, 5 mana 5 two weapon, if you attack a minion overkill, and then you freeze the adjacent minion. So, I've been seeing overkill in Shaman before, don't know how, you know, much of a Shaman attribute that really should be, but uh, freezing the adjacent minions reminds me a lot of Avalanche. I, I could definitely see this uh, as a flavorful, kind of design-heavy Shaman card. Weapons are pretty powerful, can be powerful in Shaman, we've seen like Doomhammer and Spirit Claws before that got nerfed. Um, almost want to see it have Overload or something. It seems kind of insane at five because it's got like the the Arcanite Reaper base stats and all that. But overall, design flavor, I'll give it a four. I like it in regards to to balance. Five and a five two weapon. It's premium stats with upside. But again, I mean, we've seen the way that Blizzard designs their weapons. You you don't have to look very far from War Axe to any other class weapon. They like to put the upside on top of it. So. Is this necessarily overpowered? I don't think so. You have to overkill a minion and then you freeze it. Your player can position properly around it. So I'll give it a four in terms of balance. I think it's strong, but it's reasonable. It's definitely reasonably strong. So with this put free shaman over the top, I don't think this would really help Morabia. It's still a six mana four four, but I appreciate the effort. Next, we have a submission from basically a deity. Uh, he submitted a hunter, a, a hunter slash demon hunter card, so a dual class card. It's a two mana, two, three minion, battle cry, refresh your hero power, outcast, upgrade it this turn only. So you play it, it's out, you, um, you get a new, you, you refresh your hero power. So if you're a hunter, you get another two mana hero power. You can steady shot again. If you're, um, if you're a demon hunter, you can do your one mana hero power. And then if you outcast it, it refreshes as the upgraded version. So you're going to get two mana deal three or one mana deal two, depending on what class you are. And actually, this card's really, really interesting. So Hunter has had a lot of hero power based stuff in throughout Hearthstone's history. There's been Dynomancy. There's been other ways of manipulating your hero power. Uh, Demon Hunter, not as much, but this does feel very hunter demon under me they both care about their hero power there to the classes that like to use it a lot demon are just because it's one mana it's so flexible hunter because well it's their main way of killing their opponent they've been classically aggressive and i just i like what this does it allows you to refresh your hero power and then of course the outcast synergy of upgrading it so design flavor wise i really like this card it just feels this feels like a hunter or demon under card to me it just does so i'm gonna give it a five in that regard in terms of balance it's probably a little bit insanely op it's a two mana two three and the effect is pretty insane just with the battle cry like the battle cry is really good and then the outcast is kind of ridiculous so i would think you probably want to scale it back to be maybe like a two mana two two or something like that i don't think you want this to be premium statted but again we've seen so many cards premium statted upside all that lately but i think this because it has like a double dip of an insanity it's probably a little bit too powerful but i think it's cool it'd be a very good card would likely see play and i don't think it's too ridiculous so i'll give it a four to five on the the balance scale but overall i really like the card i think it's really well done next i have a card submitted by roman this one is out there i'm gonna put it out there i don't even know how to really evaluate this one but let's take a look it's treasure tog woggle it's a four mana two two so absolutely absolutely terrible stats in battle cry your opponent can't interact with your hand and deck until your next turn so what does that mean? Well, I'm trying to think of it as you can't put anything into their deck, so you couldn't shuffle a bomb, you couldn't, like, mind vision their hand, you couldn't, like, thought steal from their deck, 
basically everything from your hand and deck is uninteractable in some way. Um, can't dirty rat their stuff, all that kind of thing. How would you implement that hard? So I don't think you can. I don't think the wording is quite specific enough for allow um, a player to really utilize it. It's a neutral legendary, so I don't know. Design flavor wise, I I, I appreciate the uh, the thought of it because it is something we've never seen before. Where you literally you can't mess with my deck. Screw you. This is my deck. This is my hand. You can't touch it. But I don't know if that's really something you could implement in Hearthstone, but. I like the thought. I like the thought. I'll give it a three on the design and flavor. And in terms of balance, I think this card is really bad. Like, it's a really, really bad tech card because it's a four mana 2 2 that a lot of times won't do anything. Because, well, your opponent, they could just wait a turn to either rat or shuffle or bomb or whatever. And you're playing a four mana 2 2. So, balance wise, I think it's like a one. It's just way too weak. You can definitely slap some stats on this and feel okay. Like a four mana 4 4. Even some 4 5. I think you could justify it because the effect in itself, is not particularly powerful outside of certain situations. So you want to bump it up to 4 or 5? I think you could definitely justify it. Next, we have a card submitted by Magnumine. He uh, made this card apparently two years ago when Elementals were a thing. So we've got a 5 mana 5-5 five, five Mage Legendary Elemental named Murmur. And at the start of your game, if your deck only is even cost spells, then your Elementals have Echo. So... This guy would have Echo, right? But it doesn't have an effect itself. So it's like a Baku or a Gen type card. But instead of even cost cards or odd cost cards, it's spells. So you could have like Primordial Glyph, Fireball, Polymorph, Blizzard, all these spells. And then for the rest of the game, your, your elementals have uh, Echo. So you have like Water Elemental. Um, you, Zephyrus would be probably completely broken with this this was a highlander deck uh, i think the, the zephyrus could be pretty busted but yeah any elemental that could be very powerful especially like when Jaina was a thing with lifesteal attached to your elementals that would be pretty particularly nuts this is like a really hard card to evaluate in terms of uh, balance but in terms of design and flavor i think it's really cool um elementals having echo and mage i don't know how relevant i don't know if mage has really had anything echo based i can't think of anything but, I mean, Mage is very spell magical. I, I think they could get away with echoing and the elemental stuff and making it spell-based for your requirement feels very Mage to me. Design flavor, I'll give it a 5. I think it's really, really cool. Feels very Mage. I could realistically see a card like this. In terms of balance, I think it's too strong. Like, the only downside of your deck building is even cost spells. You, would only, you could realistically run none <laughs> or something, like, or just a couple, and then you just have, like... Like I said, copy Zephyrus over and over. It would be kind of insane. Um, repeating Water Elemental even is really strong. Um, but yeah, overall, probably a little bit overpowered. Just like the, I mean, the Baku Gen stuff. Just think about how insane they were for that upside. But I don't know if it's on that level. I'll give it a, I'll give it a three on the balance level. It's, it might be okay, but probably a little bit too much on the uh, the good end but really cool card i really like that ben submitted a card saying the voice line for it would be go big or go gnome i like it it's a zero mana legendary we have never seen a zero mana legendary minion called neckbeard the lucky it's a one one in battle cry if your deck has no duplicates so a highlander card discover a 10 mana spell from any class so that could be like survival of the fittest puzzle box uh, you got, what else is there? You got the, the 10 mana shaman spell that gets taunts. In wild, you have like doom. Uh, there's, there wouldn't be that many to pick from. So this guy would actually be pretty, you'd be able to select pretty well what you're going to get depending on what format you're playing. And how good is this? Probably not very good. Um, you can't really utilize his effect until turn 10 when you can actually cast a spell. If you're playing rogue with prep or you're playing druid, you have like, uh, innervate or lightning bloom you could cheat it out but in the other classes you're probably gonna have to be too respectful and maybe get box and mage you play it on on turn 10 and you box somebody you can do some cool stuff but it's a pretty cool highlander card um you can discover that 10 minute spell that you reliably can put in your deck and assuming certain classes could take advantage like i said uh design flavor wise feels highlander to me <laughs> it's got a pretty big upside that's not you don't necessarily insane in every class unlike zephyrus which is insane in every class so design flavor wise i'll give it a i'll give it a, a four i think it's pretty neat and in terms of balance probably a little too on the weekend 
Uh, like, the neutral Highlander cards have always been relative, just all really powerful. Like, the weakest one I can think of is Kazakus, because the potions could be inconsistent. And I would probably put this weaker than any of those cards, even though it's zero mana, but really cool card. Um, I'll give it a three on the design balance. In, in order to make it, you know, stronger, I, I don't know what you would do if you would make it discover the 10 cost spell and it costs something less and then give it some mana cost. I don't know, but cool card. I liked it. And uh, yeah, that would lead for some crazy yaw boxes in every single class. And who wouldn't love that? Especially Mr. Random over here. Next, we have a submission from Skellifier called School Dine, Dine Bot. Uh, it's a four mana three, four mech for priests. And this card comes with a whole package of stuff. So it is Spell Burst, Discover a School Meal card. If the spell costs six or more, discover a weak special instead. So we can take a look through here. We have Breakfast. It's a one mana spell. Uh, to restore seven health to a friendly character. You have two mana Lunch. Restores a health to a full. Uh, restores a minion to full health and give it plus two health. We have Big Dessert. Restore a minion to full health and double its stats. It can't attack this turn. We have Meat Monday. Restore seven health to all characters. Overheal on friendly minions. Give them that amount of extra health. So any excess, they get health. Um, you have Summon three, two, five Hungry Students with Taunt. At the start of your next turn, they heal to full health. Not at eight mana. You have Waffle Wednesday. Double a minion's health twice. And give it can't attack and taunt. Yeah, fries fun day Friday. Double all minions health and have their attack, uh, have their attack and it's rounded down. Turkey Thursday summon a zero twenty turkey plate. Then then all friendly minions attack it and the one that kills it gets plenty twenty health. And then you have the image of the turkey plate. So this card is ridiculous and these all of these effects are just crazy. The school mule card stuff. Um, I don't think this could ever be implemented into Hearthstone. There's just too many variables, too many crazy mechanics with like the excess healing, buffing the minions, the doubling the health and not attacking. But I, I, I'm going to give Skellifier a hell of a lot of credit. This is the most flavorful shit I've ever seen so far reviewing these cards. I think it's super rad. Um, I'm just going to give it a five on design flavor. I think it's hilarious. Old Dinebot is an absolute treasure, and that turkey is hilarious. Uh, design or balance wise, it's probably like a one or a two because this thing's just ridiculous. Some of these spells are just way over the top, great. Like zero man to 20 and then giving plus 20 health and restoring to full, and all. I think they're probably a little too OP, but I think this card would look amazing golden and all that stuff, so. I'll, I'll give it a two in terms of balance, but a five for design flavor. I think it's really cool. And just, I don't know, it's flavorful. It reminds me of Priest of the Feast, but like to the nth degree. Really cool stuff. Really cool. Next is a submission by Vintergat. It is a shaman card called Even the Odds. It's a two mana spell. Increase the cost of cards in both players' decks by one. So yeah, you're basically de-ramping both of you. And that's interesting. It's a really interesting look at counterplay. Um, I don't know so much that this fits into shaman and manipulating mana cost of stuff it feels maybe more in line you would do it in a class that like the d ramp particularly like i think demon hunter has done a little bit of that with like mana burn and things like that um but it's a really cool interesting concept um it could help maybe shaman not feel so bad when you're overload but again you're taking you're paying two mana to make your opponent over go over one and you're going one i just can't see a world where this card would really work out um, I don't see it really being particularly flavorful with Shaman, particularly, but it's a cool card. And again, I know Shaman does have man mana man manipulation on their own end with Overload, so I'll give it a three on the design flavor there. Um, in terms of balance, this card is just, it's two mana to screw over both of you, and that's a two mana sink for you, and your opponent doesn't really have to do that. I think it's probably a card that would need to cost like one. For it to really be realistic to try and screw with your opponent. It'd be really good in a meta though. Where people are running 10 mana cards. Because then they would be rendered unplayable. Making this card very powerful. But that just never happens. So uh, balance wise I'll give it a 2. I just don't see it being strong enough to really see play. It just feels too underpowered. Like yeah just increasing the costs of the cards in both players decks by 1. Like you're hurting yourself more than your opponent on average because you're spending the two mana so maybe a bump it down by a mana something like that but i think it's a really cool card i just don't know where it fits into the shaman archetype or in terms of power 
how well it could do. So we have three cards from Shin Getter. He submitted an eight mana uh, Paladin spell, legendary spell. Uh, destroy your highest attack and highest health minions to silence and destroy all minions, enemy minions. So if you have two minions on board, it's a board clear. Um, I'm not sure how this would work. I would imagine you it would only work if you have two minions on board because otherwise it's an unconditional situation like removal, AoE. That would probably be a little too good but i mean it's in terms of like you think about it in regards to like a twisting nether that would be fair but this can be better than twisting nether right so looking at it de like design flavor wise does it make much sense in paladin with the whole sacrificing of minions this feels more maybe it'd be more in line with like a warlock type of deck maybe priest they've had more of the self-sacrificing stuff but i could see it a little bit in paladin and the flavor is pretty cool. I'll give it a I'll give it a three in that regard. In terms of balance, um, I actually think it's a really interesting and unique card, where you can be like rewarded depending on how you've played your minions, how you manipulate their attack, their health, and all that. Maybe you have like a really high attack minion, you have a really low health minion, and then everything else is like really wedged in between, and you not you get to clear the, the all the enemy minions, silence it so they they don't get the death rattle effects. And you swoop in and go for that kill. So it's a really interesting, well, I think a well thought out card. It's pretty cool. Is it probably too strong? Likely, if you only have two minions, is a full clear, but not necessarily. AOEs when they're eight mana, they've pretty much never seen play unless they're historically like completely like board swinging, like twisting nether psychic screen type of thing. So I'll give it a four in terms of balance. I don't think it would be too strong. But I could be wrong on that. Next, we have a legendary. It's a six mana, two, four neutral legendary. So terrible stats. But Battle Cry, destroy three random enemy minions, gain their effects and stats. Uh, it's named Soma Cruz. And uh, yeah, design flavor wise, I believe Soma Cruz is a Castlevania character. So I don't know how flavorful that is in the whole Hearthstone universe. But I respect the hell out of the Castlevania series. So I'll just, for the flavor design, I'll, I'll just throw it a three. Honorable mention. Love Castlevania. But anyways, in terms of balance, this card is ridiculous. Oh, like ridiculous not only is it six mana two four destroy three minions but gaining their stats and effect this would be like the most broken card ever like literally would be the most broken batshit crazy thing ever just think about like your opponent has a ragnaros a lich king and a ysera on board they're playing big breeze you get all of that it'll be, it'll be crazy and even if it just killed like three one ones, it's insane. So yeah, I, I think the card's cool, but yeah, Soma Cruz may be really powerful in Castlevania, which believe me, Soma is. But in Hearthstone Land, this would be way, 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 way over the top. So I'll give it a one in the balance department. But again, a really cool card, and I like me some Soma Cruz. And then next we have Guts the Black Sword Mini. It's a nine mana ten seven legendary for warriors. Divine Shield and Rush and Battle Cry attack the highest attack minion on the battlefield so guts i believe is an anime and manga character from the series berserk uh travels from company to company and he's like he's a fighter he's a warrior he's basically a warrior so i could see it fitting into the warrior theme i'm, I'm cool with that and in regards to um its power level it's a nine mana ten seven uh pretty good stats i mean like we've seen a nine mana ten ten demon and warlock that sucks the stats or sorry demon or that sucks the stats out of minions that doesn't even see play uh this would immediately attack right it would immediately attack the highest attack minion which makes it actually kind of a lot worse than if it just had rush because it might not attack what you want and all that i think it's pretty cool um it, it fits into warrior very well in terms of the rush mechanic I think the black swordsman could fit in as a warrior so i'll give it a four in design flavor it feels warrior enough to me and then in terms of balance i think it's a reasonable card it's a 10 mana it's a nine mana 10 7 divine shield that's powerful it's gonna get that attack in and then it's it likely will kill when it hits almost certainly unless it itself has divine shield or some death rattle and then you're left with a 10 7 and that's very threatening this is like the power level i believe a nine mana card should be it should be strong it should be impactful it should do something immediately when you play it and it should be provide a threat when you leave it we don't have enough cards in the game that are high mana that do a lot of stuff and even when they do they're typically not playable would this be the card that makes a nine mana card playable don't think so it's probably not at the level of like the death wing right but it's pretty strong. I like it. I'll give it a four in terms of balance. I think it could see play. And I do think it's not overly overpowered. Like the prior card was a little overpowered. So we have a submission from Doki Rider. It's a 
five mana four two weapon for hunter it's called snake whip battle cry set durability to two this weapon is also a beast i'm not entirely sure what he's going for with the set durability to two as the weapon is two durability i'm not entirely sure i might be lost on this one but we'll disregard that we'll go with the whole the weapon is a beast aspect of the card so i imagine he wants to activate beast cards with this and i think that's pretty cool like the weapon itself you see it's like a whip it's got like it looks like a snake itself it's effectively a, the the beast is a weapon and you're like attaching it to your arm as rexar has got snakes protruding out of his arm as a weapon and I think that's pretty flavorful, pretty cool. I'll give it a four to five in design flavor. In terms of design and or in terms of balance, I mean, five mana four two weapons, not fantastic. That's like you're paying one more mana for the tribe on it. The weapon is also beast, so it lets your kill commands go. Um, it can let other beast synergistic cards work, and that's pretty cool. Does it really compensate for the downside of the cost of this weapon? I don't think so. I don't think there's enough stuff to really make it thrive. So in terms of balance, I'll probably give it a three. It's not bad, not great, but... You know, I probably at least make it like a 5-2. Like, you, you can go that line. I think it's perfectly reasonable. Unless I'm missing something on the battle cry, you might have to explain it to me if you're watching this. But anyways, that is all of the user-submitted uh, cards. I hope you guys... It was a long review. I probably won't do it this long next time. Uh, but I wanted to show my love and respect for everyone that submitted a card. And yeah, the next time if I have this many submissions, I probably won't go through all of them. I'll probably mix in some of the custom subreddit stuff. But... This is my thank you to everyone who keeps supporting the channel, and I just wanted to review every single card you guys showed me, and it was really cool to take a look. There's some really good ideas. Not, not, not a single card I thought was like bad or anything like that, so that's really awesome. Some really cool imagination out there, and yeah, if you liked the video, please like and subscribe. Have a great day, and stay salty, my friends.